Well, week four in the NFL was certainly a week that happened, right, everybody? Right? It happened. You could say it happened. Nothing nothing weird happened, right? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Things got weird yet again this past week in the NFL, and it's been a interesting first month of games so far. We are now into October. We're now getting into the second portion of the season. This is when things, you know, kind of start to get, you know, a little bit more answered. Things kind of start to play out a little bit more discreetly. It's the first month gave us a lot of questions. First month gave us a few answers. And then it ended with even more questions. You know, the Cowboys, they beat the Giants, of course. You know, there were some crazy calls in this game that shouldn't have been called in favor of the Cowboys. But, you know, the Giants are the Giants, though. So what can you say about that? Um, the Bengals, they were able to get their first win against Carolina. I know. Carolina is still Carolina after all. You know, the Panthers got their victory that they got out the way with Andy Dalton. And now the Panthers defense, you know, can't really do too much again. You know, Chupa Hubbard's doing great, though. I will say that. Um, Young Wei Ku was able to lift the Falcons past the Saints, and the Saints have just not looked the greatest. You know, there were some interception returns for six in this game. It was just a rough time for Derek Carr and company. They have looked lost the past couple weeks, and they they don't get they don't have an easy road. I'll say that much. You know, they play the Chiefs on Monday night, who we'll talk about in a moment here. But you know, a little bit more. But yeah, Saints. You know, haven't looked the greatest on the face of the planet. The Texans also haven't looked great on the face of the planet, but, hey, at least they're winning a game. You know, they beat the Jags, who are haplessly winless. And Trevor Lawrence still has not won a game since Thanksgiving of 2023. I know. Crazy stuff. The Broncos beat the Jets in a game that is just absolutely laughable. Like, there was just, it was just a rough game to win all around if you were watching that game. The Vikings almost blew a lead to the Packers, but hey, the Vikings defense comes up clutch when it mattered. Three picks of Jordan Love who returned in this game, and, you know, the Vikings are still unbeaten. One of two unbeatens left along with the Chiefs and the Colts. You know, they knock off Steelers with the help of Joe Flacco, of all guys, because AR5 got hurt again. Um, that Bears defense still the saving grace, you know, against the Rams, who again have no Cooper Cup, no Puka Nakua, just Kyron Williams and Matt Stafford. But I mean that even that's not enough to stop that Bears defense when they get rolling. I can't say the same for CJ Gardner Johnson and the Eagles, though, you know, and then Jalen Hurts and the rest of the offense. Yeah, no Devontae Smith. Yeah, no AJ Brown. You know. Still got Dallas Goddard, but even that, you know, wasn't enough to really stop Baker Mayfield and and Chris Godwin and that e, and that Bucks offense, which was clicking from from opening from opening kick to the end of that game. It was it was a rough game to watch for the Eagles, to be quite honest with you. It was a really really rough game for Eagles fans that really just kind of cements this team, you know, as just being you know kind of there. You know, they can do some damage. I think the Eagles can do some damage, you know, when the time comes for them to do some damage. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, the defense is just not there, you know. It's not there at all. 49ers, you know, they're injury prone and they're still beating the brakes off the Patriots. They still beat the brakes off the Patriots. Washington beat the brakes off of the Arizona Cardinals, led by Jaden Daniels yet again. You know, Brian Robinson Jr., you know, that, that that's a lethal combination right there. You know, Scary Terry McLaurin. And a actually decent defense, you know, for the commanders, you know. I can't say the same for the Chargers, though. Um it was this this game between the Chiefs and the Chargers was another weird one in which, you know, certain things 
you know, kind of went the Chiefs way, but certain things did not, as in Rashi Rice got injured, you know, he's supposedly out for like four weeks, but he could be out for a little bit longer. It could have been an ACL tear, but apparently it was not. Um, you know, he ran into Mahomes, but, you know, again, the luck of the Chiefs, you know, continues. And, I mean, the Chargers shot themselves the foot late with some bad plays that just did not make any sense whatsoever. And it's kind of the moral of the story. Yet again, the Chiefs beat the Chargers yet again. And the Chiefs are still unbeaten. Um, the Raiders are somehow, you know, 2-2. Two and two. But again, it's the Browns. They have not looked good the majority of the year. But I will say the big surprise was the Ravens, you know, beating the Bills the way they did and actually not giving up the lead. You know, the Ravens were able to just absolutely smother Josh Allen and crew. And I get it. Again, the lack of receiver depth is finally coming and catching up to the Bills the way it should have been pretty much all season. Again, they have, you know, Knox Kincaid at tight end. But, I mean, Khalil Shakir is just not going to get it done for you at the wide receiver's position. Keon Coleman is not going to get it done for you at the wide receiver's position, you know. And, I mean, Allen was just smothered in this game. I thought this was going to be a much better game than it was, but it was not. I will say the Titans and the Dolphins was a rough game if you watch that. And... I mean, the Seahawks, you know, could not stop Jared Goff at all. We're talking, we're talking Goff, you know, was 18 for 18, even got a touchdown in this game. Tyler Huntley is terrible. Um, Mason Rudolph had to come in the game for Will Levis, which tells you how bad that Tennessee-Miami game was. But now, now we're in a new week, week five. And we got a Thursday night barn burning. The NFC South is looking like probably the best division in the NFL this year so far. At least probably going to be the most entertaining one. You know, Young Way Koo, Ken, you know, and Kirk Cousins and the Atlanta Falcons, you know, offense is going to be at Baker Mayfield and that Buccaneers offense tomorrow night. Gonna to be a good one in less than 24 hours from now. Um Sunday morning. It's going to be the Jets and the Vikings. I like how all the pretty much the, all the interesting matchups are kind of spread out. You know, again, Bucks Falcons tomorrow night, Jets Vikings on Sunday. You know, morning, which I mean, I don't know how Aaron Rodgers and crew after that performance is going to go into Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, you know, and do their thing against the undefeated Vikings led by Sam Darnold. Uh, Panthers Bears, it's a game that's on Browns. Watching the Browns is just not it in 2024, you know. So, I I'm hoping Jaden Daniels just goes crazy like he did against the Cardinals on this Browns team because I just don't have any faith in them. Um, Dolphins Patriots, ugh. Colts Jags. Maybe if Joe Flacco was starting, I have no idea because, again, you know, they're, the Colts are looking like they're going to run AR5 into the ground, to be quite honest with you. Um, Bills Texans is probably the best game of this early window. I'd say maybe Ravens Bengals, but again, you know, the Bengals still gave up a lot of yards. And again, there were some yards in late, in late garbage time that they gave up, uh, a couple touchdowns to Andy Dalton. You know, that they weren't supposed to give up. I'm, I'm kind of scared for this Bengals defense going up against Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. You know, I'm kind of scared for him. Joe Burrow hasn't played completely well. Um, but Bills Texans should be a fun one. Um, again, CJ Stroud and the Texans, you know, they've been kind of wonky a little bit lately, but they've been able to, you know, get what they need done, you know, as far as getting taking care of the win column and keeping ahead of the rest of the AFC South. Can't say the same for the Bills, you know, in a way. But then again, yeah, it's kind of expected at this point that the Bills might run away with this division. I, I do not have any faith in the Jets anymore. They just don't, they don't have the receivers either that can really keep up, you know, on the offense and can't really keep up either, to be quite honest with you. So Raiders-Broncos is probably one of the games – in the late window, that's just actually kind of intriguing, you know. Again, for the fact that one of these teams will be 
three and two at the end of the day. You know, Gardner Minshew versus Bo Nix. Not the most compelling matchup in the world, but hey, I'll take it any day over listening to Brady. I'll take it any day over, you know, over watching the cards of the 49ers. Look, take it any day. Brock Purdy has been dealing, you know, you know, Jordan Mason has been dealing. You know, the cards, you know, can be competitive, but at the same time, they have games like they did against the Commanders. Where they just completely shit the bed, and I, I'm not worried about the Giants at all. The Giants are not good. Seahawks should be able to take care of business. You know, they have Kenneth Walker back in the backfield alongside Zach Charbonnet. So I don't know. We'll see. Packers Rams was interesting at the start of the season, but now this game, you know, has kind of lost all its luster. Jordan Love and coming back from that injury this past week did not look great. Yeah, that team is young and it's been built up to be a good team, but it's just the fact that the Rams really don't have anything aside from Kyron Williams to help out Matthew Stafford is just is kind of alarming. And of course, you know, Saints Chiefs without Rushy Rice, you know, what are the Chiefs going to do? You know, Von Miller's also suspended as well, so I wonder how that's going to affect the Bills Texans game. And then the Cowboys Steelers, it's a game that's going to happen. It's going to be Justin Fields versus Dak Prescott. Like, what more can you say about that? That uh, I, 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 It looks like I have a smile on my face, but I'm honestly, you know, it's kind of scared for this matchup because this is the kind of matchup the Cowboys would lose. This is the kind of matchup the Steelers would lose. You know, just it's the game like this where two middling teams, you know, that are somehow where they are, where they are, you know, at this point early in the season get this type of game. I mean, again, it's an intriguing game, too. Because the Steelers, you know, still lead the um, AFC North, and the Cowboys are fighting in the NFC East early on. So, you know, th this is key early on. You know, whoever wins this game is going to have some leverage over the other. So, that'll do it for me. Um, I've got nothing else to say about this Week Five slate. It is not the most appealing slate to me, but it will be. To somebody, somebody's gonna be able to say, "Hey, I watch Colts Jags, and I like that." You do you, buddy. You do you. I'm gonna get on up out of here, and I will see you all tomorrow night to talk the NHL for the first time for the 2024-2025 season. And we'll react to those PWHL team names. Maybe talk a little bit of college hockey. I don't know, but for now. I'm going to get on up out of here and make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Click the notification bell. Do whatever you need to do. I'll have some more polls up about some of these games as well in the future. So be on the lookout for the rest of the week for polls on some other games. And toodaloo.